The NFL released the top 100 players in the NFL. This list sucks. Fucking terrible. Players don't know shit. Let's go through the top 10 of the NFL top 100 players and re-rank the top 10. Then it's either Jones or, or Tyreek Hill. I'm out. You're out? <laughs> hey, come back. Jack, come back. How real is the Devonta Adams to New York Jets possibility? First of all, I'm still floored by Rodgers taking a $35 million actual pay cut. Welcome, Welcome back, back to Welcome another back. episode of Caps Off by the Game Day. Shout out uh, BDG. Shout out out you sound bit. tired as shit. I am tired, bro. Last night you I had a little. Right now? Yeah, man. I just came from hooping, wow. so you know I'm beat. That's why I'm bro, tired. Bro, who dreams though? That's why you're tired. You're still in your dreams. I am yep. dreaming, bro. Hooping. I hey, I, uh, bro, I had a little probably... neck. I had a little crick in my neck last night. Oh, took okay. a, oh, a, took a muscle. Yeah, you know, crick. Were you in just neck? dunking hella hard? And yeah, all yeah. Night? yeah. And I took a muscle relaxer at like nine. Right. Knocked the fuck out at like ten thirty. No bueno. Which is not early enough. I was hoping. Yeah, I was gonna say that hour and a half. Yeah, I was. What was this muscle relaxer? Uh, and yeah. how relaxed were you? It was relaxing. I actually don't know what it was. My girlfriend has like back pain sometimes. <laughs> My that girlfriend gets some back pain sometimes, no. so she has them for, for when oh. she's got back problems. And so she gave me one, and I took it, and I am now incredibly My, my dad has it a feels friend like who smokes a bunch of weed, and he says it's because he has chronic back pain. Yeah. Me too. My ass. That's, that's what I do. Yep, exactly. That's why I do that also. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I am a little sleepy for sure. But, you know, we yeah, got to get the energy back up. We got to get the energy okay. back up. Uh, hard Knocks comes. Energy's hard. fucking up, man. Energy's yeah. up. Yeah. We up, they we down. Up. Jet up. Hey, don't jet, sleep. Jet the fuck Speaking up. Speaking of the Jets. Uh, Dude, jet I wore the Hard Knocks hat today. Hard Knocks comes out tonight. Hard yeah. Knocks comes out tonight. Bro, hard and knocks. the Johnny Manziel documentary came out today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's a big day. That's shit actually going to be crazy. Oh, I'm actually like I What's saw that, that on. I gotta watch that. Netflix. Untold, it's the Netflix? Untold series. Untold series. Oh, they made one Bro, about him. I about watched him? the Jake Paul one like the day after the fight. Uh, not gonna lie, Jake Paul one. Hated the yeah. Jake Paul one. Oh, I gotta watch it. it, it it's not it as good, good as I thought, but it, like right after his fight, it made it made you hate it him made more. You, it made you hate <laughs> him more. Ben, why did you hate Jake Paul more after watching that? He made the whole narrative like, oh yeah, I struggled for everything. That no, I that's a fact. I. I agree. Yeah. I watched the doc and I was take. like, this is That's such, fair. like, they're trying to build take. a story around him being like having to you come know, up through some shit. And he he didn't came from no fame. That's the story. You know who I like? Yeah. So it's famous. It's but so like, stupid. You know who I liked a lot Technically, more? Technically, Disney Channel is pretty famous. Logan Paul's cool. I like Logan Paul. I, like I think Logan. he's funny. I, like I started Logan watching Paul. last night his uh, podcast with Nina Agdahl. She, I, I know some people on this podcast are not a big fan about Nina Agdahl, but she is a. Very attractive woman. She is beautiful. Well, yeah, she was a cover model for Sports Illustrated. And she dated Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, oh, that's pretty impressive. You know, it's Logan Paul, Tom Brady, same guy. They're both dating cover models for Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Magazine. Congrats to both. And Congrats. Justin Verlander. Hey, Good shout out. Shout and out Andy Roddick. Let's talk about the Jets. I love Let's Justin talk Verlander, about bro. The New York but yeah, airplanes. the Jets are going to be on Hard Knocks. That comes out tonight. They also bro. have this mini series that I think this is like their second or third season. One Jets drive. Called, Keep in mind. One Jets drive. When this comes what out, it would have already been out. Oh, it would have been all but right. You're right. So yep. we're recording this on Tuesday. Come out Wednesday. So this will come out Wednesday morning if you're listening. Um, Sorry, but, we can't so we haven't watched the first episode yet, uh, but uh, we will have watched lit. it by the time you're it's listening. Should we, should we review it on Friday? Yeah, we, maybe we yeah. should. I'm going to watch it tonight for sure. I got to watch that. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, One Jets Drive, pretty cool. You excited? I know you're a big Jets yeah, guy. Yeah, you know me, hat. dude. Huge Jets fan. Always <laughs> have been since I was a little kid, really. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, Mark Sanchez, Chad Pennington. Yep. But what have you, Jonathan Vilma. Ah, yes, of yes. course. Yeah. Um, Vilma was actually What filthy. was your favorite year over the last, My like, favorite two decades? favorite year, I mean, Jets. I would say the, the year that the Jets beat the Patriots in the playoffs to go to the mm. AFC Championship. That was yeah, actually that was lit. All knowledge. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. You know up? ball. Yeah. Well, yeah. As a Jets fan, you should know that. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> obviously. That year was lit, bro. The Jets with, were with so Are you Davis and Corner? What a duo. Are you Are you going to watch the one Jets drive? I think so. I mean, at some point. Yeah. I yeah. Actually, like, how long is it? How long was no that episode? Idea. I actually, I like watched, forty-five minutes. I watched one J- Jets drive last year. Pretty good. It, it got a little slow, like a couple episodes in. Yeah, but now they like, got Aaron Rodgers. My, it was like, bro, right when I, I was about here. to say the only yeah. reason I would want to watch that one Jets drive is because Aaron Rodgers actually. Makes but would the you Jets rather exciting. watch Hard Knocks or One Jets Drive? They're both an hour. Yeah, obviously both? Hard Knocks. Yeah, maybe I'll watch both. I'll watch Hard Knocks. Give me all the Jets. give me all the Jets content, bro, because they got all the flashy names that we want to see. Like no, that's the thing have, about it. They have, they you don't want to see. You don't want to see like singular flashy name. It's Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner. Quinn Williams. Garrett Wilson. 
Garrett Wilson, like these are big names, bro. Yeah, Reese Hall is not a flashy name. I'm sorry. Not yet. Not yet. Neither yeah, is Quinn Williams. I, I'll give you. I'll give you sauce, but like Garrett will Here's be the there. Thing. Not there when yet. You think about the best, at the end of the year, Garrett. Yet. When you think be about there. the best hard knocks, you think of the Jets and the Cowboys because it's the t- it's two franchises what? that always have like big names. You don't really think about like other. The Jets have not had huge names like when they had that hard knocks. Ways. They had huge names, bro. Well, and never forget, back. Miami Dolphins had Chad Ochocinco, bro. That was crazy. Did y'all have a hard knocks? Well, yeah, we did. And nobody remembers it. That's my point. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I wasn't saying anyone remembers the, the it. Bangles, hard knocks like, people remember the Bengals one when they had like Chad Johnson and like TJ Hushman's on and they had like this like squad. Of, it, like you need players. Hard knocks has typically sucked as of late. It as of late, I totally couple agree. years. I liked I totally the Lions agree. one last year. No, it is going to be the best hard knocks in a long time. But at the same oh, yeah. time, I don't. I'm the conversation was one Jets driver hard knocks. No, why, why one knocks. or the other? You could just watch I don't want to watch two hours of Jets content. Yeah, but, That's Aaron, a lot. but Aaron Rodgers being on the Jets makes them the most exciting they've been in decades. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, well, the Jets are the biggest story of the offseason right now, easily. One and a half A decade, decades? maybe, yeah. A decade? They were exciting back in, like, 2012 or whatever one year point that was. They, you know what? I, I, don't, I, still I would say that they they're more exciting, exciting now, though. Nah, Rex Ryan. Bro, Rex Ryan was electric, bro. <laughs> Their defense was awesome, but I wouldn't say, like, because when I think exciting, I think like you can score four points weird any to, given. Oh, game. they couldn't like, do that. You know I mean? But like, is it but weird Sanchez, to say that they're more exciting now? The Jets are more exciting now because of the way the NFL is in terms of star power. Is that a weird thing to say? Like I feel like it's no, such it's a flashy to, yeah, just, NFL right now. It's just because you have a top five quarterback ever, and he's the pro- he's already probably the best quarterback to ever play for the Jets. He doesn't even have to play that well. Yeah, like Four. no, he's not better than Namath, but. Brett all time? You could say he's the second best, probably. All time? I mean, yeah. Oh, all time he's better than name it, but not for, yeah. not for the Jets. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah well, he, yeah. Hasn't played, he hasn't played a single nah. snap. Yeah. Once, once, once he does, he'll be the second best. I think there's something, like, the point I'm trying to make is that because of the way the NFL is with so much star power, with such a heavy passing offense, Aaron Rodgers being one of the best quarterbacks of all time, then going to that Jets, it just feels want, more exciting. I, I want to see... Uh, it's not I'll, as, like, a defensive team. That's the thing. It's an offensive team. Yeah. They have defense also. Fans are just biased towards offense. That's what it is. But that team... I think this hard knocks is going to be fucking nasty. awesome, though. Yeah, like, I agree. Be, Wait, yeah. What's up, Matthias? I was just going to say, I want to see a mini series on the more exciting New York team, which is the New York Giants. I'm good on that. Yeah, I just don't yeah. think... That's the thing, right? <laughs> like, speak, like, you, we just went from flashy to, like, fucking not flashy, boring. What's the opposite of flashy? Boring. Uh, <laughs> There's got to be a better word. Unflashy. Like dim. Like the flashy dim. dim. Yeah, very. Like dim. the Giants, like you just don't want to see him. I mean, Saquon and dull, that's dull, about dull. dull. I wouldn't want to see Brian. Flashy Saquon, Kevon, to dull. Kayvon Thibodeau was well, a Kayvon Thibodeau just got thrown the by The social cut's going to gonna have the Jets on flashy with some like bright lights around it and then dull like the Darren Giants. Darren Waller? Going, like dark. Well, the Jets feel I, more sexy, flashy. Dexy? Well, the Jets feel more Fuck flashy than the New York Giants. Like that just has, to me, always feels more flashy. In general? In general. No. I don't know. I yep. don't. I wouldn't think so. I think the Jets. The feel Giants more have won usually. four Super Bowls. Mazel tov. Okay, so how is that not more? Le- how is that less flashy? The Giants are a better franchise. When I think of New York football sure teams, by, by when I think of New York, when I think of New York football teams, I think of the Jets. I'm wearing the Jets, the Jets hat, and I no. think the Giants. That's crazy. You know what? Like, what? Yeah, it's it's tough. I feel like it depends. The Giants, much better franchise historically, and everything like that. I feel like in Manhattan, too. It's, Jets. it's the Giants. Oh. In Manhattan, but every, every other borough. I think there's way more Giants fans than Jets fans also. Can we calculate But that? I think that the Jets, there's something about the Jets that like. It's gritty. Yeah, I don't It's know. your blue collar everyday it's, man. It's not as clear cut the split fandom wise as like the Mets Yankees where it's like boroughs kind of like the. Hmm. the yeah. The, the Bronx, Bronx, Bronx and Manhattan. The Bronx and Manhattan is the Yankees, Jersey. Queens, Long Island, and uh, whatever the other ones Ooh, are. All the Brooklyn. Island. are. Inch. Brooklyn are also yeah, Brooklyn, the Mets. Yeah. Uh, but with the with know, the man. Giants, it's like not like that. New Jersey's very split Giants Jets. Like I feel like most people I meet from New Jersey are Giants fans. Yeah, maybe. Here's the thing is I, 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 I went from, from Dallas like to from New York. I went from Dallas to New York for college. When I got yeah. to New York, oh, most people I met were Giants fans. Now there were some Jets fans and they tend to be like the fucking weirdos. Mm-hmm. I will say I I'm not gonna lie. Like that's like I'm trying to be as objective as possible. They were like it was always like, kind of like take fucking that. weird, <laughs> but weird kind of losers. Every Jets fan I've met is a fucking diehard. Yeah. Like they they are so so into the Jets. Like your boy, you know what I'm talking. Like he's Her, crazy. I guess about that's the why Jets. for me I think of like, the Jets when I think of New York because I grew up with kids that were from New York and it was always Jets, no Giants. So they weird. No, they're pretty pretty good guys. Personality wise, that sounded like they're a little weird. <laughs> no, I don't think they're weird at all. I just. I would. I, that's why I hate the Jets. It's because of these kids. Yeah, yeah. So that's. I, I don't know. You're I also like, a Dolphins fan. You're in the same division. I think. I think them. if yeah. the Jets do well, though, it's better for New York. Like uh, it just seems like it. 
Yeah, maybe. No. I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. it's better for me if the Giants do Like, well, if Aaron so. Rodgers was on the Giants, yeah, would, it, would, like, would like that be if, a different like energy? When the, Giants, when the Giants went to the playoffs yeah, last absolutely. year. Absolutely. If That's Aaron Rodgers was on so the Giants. So, Aaron Rodgers is the only reason that the Jets but are dude, good like, for New York. But when, when the are Giants make the right playoffs, now? it's not like, holy fuck, the Giants made the playoffs. They're so like, all right, cool. They've won a it's couple Super Bowls already. Like The city, you know, I went out. People are expecting the Giants to play well because they're historically good friends. That makes sense. But if the Jets make the playoffs this year... Every fucking bar in the city will be packed to the brim. Yes, it's going to yeah, be yeah, like yeah. the the electricity in the city will be unmatched. That's what like, you get when you're have, you're historically miserable. You well, know I was saying I mean? that's like, like, that's but, like and you're a Mets the fan, Knicks, the Knicks or the Mets, can, right? You're a Mets are, fan. If the Yankees make the playoffs, honestly, life goes on. People don't really care if the Mets do. That's fucking. Big, different. But if the Giants never like, won a Super Bowl, wouldn't it be the same? Okay, thing? so is it or safe no? to? Probably. Bro, it's so hard, man. Because like it's hard to judge because we haven't seen the Jets be at least in the past like ten years. I wasn't in New York when the Jets were go with Rex Ryan. But I, I just haven't seen. School, bro. I haven't yeah. even seen the Jets be good while I've been up here, so I, I can't tell. I don't know. I just know the Giants have a lot of influence because I come just, up here. I see a lot of Giants fans. I like yeah. the Knicks point because, like, I feel like with the Knicks, they started getting good, and then the city started to get super kind of rowdy. Yeah, yeah. it'd dude. probably be the same like, with the Jets. Yeah, it probably. I think it would be the same thing because they've been so bad for so long, then all of a sudden they get good. Like you win one playoff game, and it's like they won the fucking NBA yeah. championship, right? Like. I don't, I don't know. know. I agree. If the Jets can win a playoff game this year, this place is going to be I do down. think, I though, that... so. That shit's lit, bro. Yeah. I'll be... I'll I be do think, though, fun. that personality-wise, if we're comparing fans to, like, baseball fans, like, the Jets fans, personality-wise, are more similar to Yankees fans in terms of just, like, rowdiness. You know what I mean? Rowdiness, They're sure. They're really rowdiness out there. Sure. Rowdiness. But grittiness. Mm, yeah. Shut so the Mets' say. grit. There's so many nuances, bro. It's just, like, hard. Good word. I was... I think I think the thing with the, the reason yeah. though, like getting back to hard knocks, I think this is going to be the best hard knocks we've seen in a long time, is because the Jets' personalities and like the way that their team is run with 100%. Joe Douglas, Robert Sala, it's all great. Even, it's even all like hard. Sauce, it's going to be fucking people great. So now they have personalities. Yeah. Yes. Now they, they got personalities. personalities, but they're all bought in. It's not like you got any what divas or drama queens anymore. This is what we were before, about. before y'all were before y'all were saying there were no personalities. No, 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 no. You were saying that they have flashy like flashy names. I don't think they have flashy names yet. No, no, they, they do have personalities. Have personalities. Williams, Hall, right? Breeze Hall and Garrett Wilson are not quite yet flashy names. Sauce Gardner, Sauce Gardner is flashy. Sauce Gardner is also personality. I would say they're in the territory of like when the Cowboys were on Hard Knocks. Trayvon Diggs. That like that is a personality, but he wasn't like the big. He wasn't like the flashiest name yet. He had it right after. Which hard year were they? But like Zeke was super flashy. Yeah, and was like Zeke was ago. like outspoken yeah, and fun. Ago. Like him and Dak. It was a bad one too. I agree. Hard Knocks has been complete shit. Honestly, hopefully it's good again. Like the uh, the I last think the great, last good one was the Browns one. I think the, the, the last great one was the Jets. I think the last great one was the Jets. Is there a Hard Knocks curse? Is the that Browns on the one with the fat guy that goes, right? <laughs> Yeah. That is unbelievable. I'm trying to bounce Andy my belly. Andy Reid's ball and stuff. <laughs> nah, I that think. That and, uh, <laughs> and then uh, who's who's that one tight end who's <laughs> weird as shit? One was uh, Kajus or something like that. I don't know. He played on Stanford. I should know. Whatever. The one thing I do hate about cool. Hard Knocks, though, is when they show people getting cut. That's fucked up. But that's kind of the part of it, though. No, that's a great part. What? I just think it's I, I, I love that part, it's actually. Like, yeah, it's a very important part. And that's like, you have you have the one... Yeah, they're not showing. They're, they're not, not showing. showing people they're get not, cut. Well, that was, that was oh, yeah. the one. Uh, That's fucking stupid. That was the one. Aaron Rodgers uh, request. That's like no. Half I think of the I show. think I think it was just like a team request that they had said. They so what the do fuck that. do you cover? Because my favorite part of watching Hard Knocks is getting so bought into one random practice Who gets squad cut. dude. It's yeah. the drama, and then he gets bro. Cut. It's the drama. That's my it favorite part. The Simi Fajokos of the world. No, see, I would hate to see that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Too soon. Too soon. I remember. I'll never forget when the Dolphins had Avante Davis. He cried on camera, and I was like, that just. That's amazing, bro. No, that hurts me. That no, hurts but it, it humanizes it, and it shows you that, like, yes. it's a hard fucking sport to, mm. to play. Like, not even just to play, but just make the fucking Vontae, roster. Which, Vontae, which one was that? Vontae Davis. On, on Vontae, which? Vernon Davis' Dolphins. brother, right? Yeah. Oh, I think he's on Broncos. I'm and like, he I don't retired midway through Broncos. the fucking game at halftime when he was with the Colts. On the Colts. Yeah. I remember that. That was yeah. fucking That's stupid nuts. as shit. I don't know. I don't know. So who's the flashier team? The Giants. Jets. Flash your team like the Giants, but flash your team right now. I don't know. Fucking weird, man. I don't really weird give a question. fuck about yeah. it either right. way. I think it's, wait, I, is it safe to say, I think, at least, because like now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of the Giants fans I met were like suburban New York. Nobody lived like in New York yeah, City. Oh. A lot yeah. of New York. In Jersey. New Jersey. West Connecticut. Chester, a lot of New York. Yeah. Yeah. Giants. Privileged team. The Jets are the city's team then, possibly. Is that true? I can might see be. that. Yeah. It might be. The Jets are like the city. And then the Giants are like the more privileged suburban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. The blue Jets collar Jets, blue collar Jets, privileged Giants, privileged Giants. <laughs> That's what it is. Urban and suburban because they got championships. Ah, uh, there the we Jets. go. We found and it out. Not as much. 
I, yeah, I'm very little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I grew up in Jersey, so clearly I'm hey, so wait I'm all so Jersey Jersey the, kids, the kids, the no, kids, so the kids who were Jets fans, they're like, they're like, yeah, my I, parents were like from Queens. You know, just <laughs> my <laughs> parents are from Queens too, bro. My mom grew up. Sorry, I make you Queens, bro. You it only makes sense. It only makes sense. I got a Jets hat, and not a Giants hat, though, because I am. Hey, shout out the Yankees, man. I am forklift certified. Shout out New Era, also dual forklift. That makes sense. Jets and dual forklift certified. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about other things because the Jets and the Giants, as exciting as they are, I'm bored. I'm bored of shit. The NFL released the top 100 players in the NFL. This list sucks. The list is entirely out now. We got the last 10 players this morning or last night. Fucking terrible. Players don't know shit. It's, I think it is maybe one of the worst lists I've ever seen. And I, I also, Damn, like, we oh are gosh. notorious for making terrible lists. But it's literally lists. made by and people And it's worse than any list we've sport. ever made. <laughs> like, worse than any list we've ever made. Jalen Hurts, I mean, what the fuck How the doing? fuck do you put Jalen Hurts three when he's not even the third best I want, quarterback? I was about to say, Jalen Hurts is the fourth best quarterback at best. I want to get to it in a like, second because let's go, let's go through the kind of top half of the list. Before the top we, half? The, like, sorry, the bottom half of the list, I okay. guess. Okay. You know, the, the 50 to 100 era. Mm. Well, and let me please introduce you to number 55, Tony Pollard, who was a fucking backup. backup. Oh, that was <laughs> that really was good. cool. I, I knew you were, was, 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 uh, were going to say. Emphasize. No, no, no. Sorry. Is Tony Pollard better than Amon Ross St. Brown? Yes. Is he better than Trayvon Diggs? Is he better than Debo Samuel? No. Is he better than Joey Bosa? No. Bobby Wagner? Is he better than Garrett Wilson? Is no. he better than Lamar Jackson? Is he better no. than Is he better than Zach Martin? Is he better no. than Tua? Yes. No, he's yeah. not. Yeah, is he, he better is. than Buda Baker? He's not better no. than even guys like he's Larry Geno Smith. Yes. Mark D-hop. Andrews. Yeah, way better than Geno. D-Hop? Devontae no. Smith? Dalvin Cook? Not, no. Is he a better running back than Justin Dalvin Fields? Cook? No. Devontae, here, here's what. All you have to say is this. Devontae <laughs> Smith. All you have to say is this. Devontae Smith was 100, right? Or 99? 100. 100. That was worth 100. To Pollard was what, 55? 55. That's the stupidest shit. That's my point. Devontae Smith is so much better than Tony Pollard, and I'm a Cowboys fan. But, you, but you're also a dynasty and football a manager. Fan. And, right? a yeah, and a Yankees fan. That's Yankees what I really good. Dynasty G. No, but shout out Brian Burns at 54, man. Yeah, no, uh, shout uh, out. Cooper yeah. Cup at 47. That's so bad. No, nah, he didn't play that this year, though. I know he didn't play much, but like when he played, he was fucking sick yeah, still. Like, yeah, but no. You're, Pats, no, but you're, you're, Pats, you're telling reason, me, the only reason tell me Jalen Waddle essentially is better than Cooper Cup. That's what they did. Yeah, he played more games. Jalen Waddle is better than Cooper Cup. He's not. But the only reason Lamar Jackson's in the 70s is because he didn't play a full season. So you have to understand that, like, guys who were limited last year are going to be lower on the list or not on the list at all. It's okay. How much does recency bias play into making this NFL Everything. 100 list? I mean, Everything. I think players, because they, they play whole, against these guys all year. They see this shit. This the list. whole top 100 of recency bias. Josh Jacobs wasn't even ranked and is now considered the best running back in the NFL. There News ain't no flash, way. He's not the best running back in the NFL. Bro, there, there, there's hey, just hey, Jack, rank these three running backs. Uh, Josh right. Jacobs, Christian McCaffrey, and Saquon Barkley. McCaffrey, Barkley, and then Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Psych! Psych, it's the, yeah, it's the opposite. I know! Yeah. <laughs> the You're NFL 100 me. list put Josh Jacobs as ahead of both of them, then Bro. Saquon, and then Christian all right. McCaffrey. You, uh, all right, Lipe, here. This is a, this is, I just want to quiz you on this. Do you think CeeDee Lamb's better than Christian McCaffrey, realistically? No. Better football player? No. He's ranked well, he's of close. Him. He's he's getting there. Let me ask I you a question. He is close because he's thirty four yeah. and McCaffrey's thirty five. I think that's yeah. No, they're cl- I think they're like, close to each other. Let me in ask terms you a question. Like relative. Bro, Chris ask- McCaffrey's like the fifth or sixth best running back in football. If you based off this. Oh, list. you want to talk rankings? Oh, where would one of you guys put Kirk that's Cousins in the top twelve of quarterbacks? I put well, him like. Wait, and I put him like I put him like yeah. ten because I feel like consensus is that Kirk twelve. Okay, he's the sixth best quarterback according to this list. I'm be honest. I like that's, that, though. Okay. I, I fuck with that because Kirk, I like them in quarterback. Not the so, response so, I was hoping for. All right, so but I don't know what the fuck no, that means. No, what you should no. do is name the quarterbacks that are after him. Yeah. Okay, happily. Let me just find them. Here are the quarterbacks <laughs> after Kirk It is Cousins. a big list. It is a large list. I got to keep scrolling. Aaron Rodgers. No. Dak <laughs> Prescott. No. No. Give me Kirk. Kirk is there. Lamar Kirk's Jackson. All these no. no. Oh well, injury, God. so I understand. Oh, my Tua God. Tua Tagovailoa. Yeah, give me Kirk. <sighs> God bless you, at least thinking about it. I appreciate you. you're a good friend. Um, Jared Goff. Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. No, neither. Neither. Actually, hey, Kirk over Justin. Technically, yeah. technically, Kirk over Justin Fields, for sure. Yeah. Technically, but because of this list, like we can say that Jared Goff is better than Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. Yes. Something to be said about that. Goff 66. I'm you want to talk a, more lists? I'm is Jamar Chase the seventh best wide receiver in the NFL? Arguably. He's in that top seven. You can I feel like he's closer to five than he is closer to ten. 
Yeah, bro. I don't. I don't know. Well, seven, seven, that's how it works. Yeah, seven is definitely yeah. seven, seven is definitely seven and a half would be right <laughs> in the middle. Yeah, no, like I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad if you're six receivers ahead of him. Like I think all that top seven is kind of interchangeable. Like. Here's the thing. It's like the, <laughs> the conversation is going so many places. Some of which you said, I totally agree with you. Some of which you said, uh, it's fine. Jamar Chase being number seven is okay. I don't He's think close. Justin Jefferson is the second best player in the NFL. That's fine, but you can argue that, and I don't think anyone's that mad. I, so I make think an actually for it. the most blasphemous Would thing you make is... make an argument for it? I mean, he's on pace to break every fucking record in history for a receiver. I think the worst part of this list, honestly... Uh, you're welcome right here, Lipe. Is that Zach Martin's 68? Yes. yes. It's one of yes. That is 100%. actually fucking insane. Yeah, that's I know he's a guard, but like... Yeah, but we've seen guards really high. I, also, incredible. Zach Martin last year was probably like... I think he was top 20, so... Well, there, there's one stat with him that I always see that like blows my fucking mind. What, like, he's like giving up one sack in like 10 years? Yeah, it's something like that. It's like whatever his sack rate is, is like actually... You can't believe that. Yeah, he's... I mean, you know, oh my God. Some of these defensive guys are also crazy. Like to have to have a TJ Watt, you know, at twenty seven, right next to Dexter Lawrence. Jamal, like, I think of TJ Watt versus Dexter Lawrence, even though how about, an edge versus. How about fucking Jamal Williams lineman. being in the top one hundred? Yes, in general. that I was that I saw. I that love earlier. him. He's that's a great crazy. personality. But that's he didn't you're do saying anything. Jamal Williams is one spot touchdowns. ahead of Trevor Lawrence. That's crazy. Nah, what about bro? That's I mean, crazy. If you're talking defensive players like Chris Jones being ahead of TJ Watt, also it's like crazy. Chris bro, Jones did have an amazing Chris, year, but Chris Jones being ahead of Miles Garrett. I think Chris being Jones being ahead of Aaron, Aaron Donald, Donald is, is still wild. It's, wild. it's pretty crazy. Like the the other part to it that I also just think is absurd, which I get, it's not like the sexiest position, but Trent Williams, I think, was what top three last year. He was no, no now, he, he was about around. Wasn't he there around last there? Year, and now he's fourteen. Like he's I still think an they don't year. they don't respect offensive linemen. It's like, not sexy. Even I I think if you said who's the best player at their position in football, it might be Trent Williams. Like, yeah. So it's yeah, I guess. Um, like he's like by far the best tackle, I think, but. Two. I don't know. I think All right, let's let's go through the top ten of the three. NFL top one hundred players and re rank the top ten as Ooh. they are right now. So Ooh. with so, so just just using, using that, top, using top, that 10. top ten, okay. How would you re rank them? Okay, it would, I think we Mahomes all agree that one. Patrick Mahomes is one. Mahomes one. Out of those next guys, I would Josh Allen two. Well, this is not a cumulative list. Okay, we have, to, we have to all agree. We have to all agree. Okay, okay. This is gonna be tough. I we actually might got Mahomes one. I actually might, put might propose Parsons. So, or Parsons. We're just or reordering the top ten. Yeah, as a group. Mahomes yeah. one, right? Mahomes one. Uh, I would probably let's just put, end the list. I would probably might put two. Micah Parsons too. I'll put yeah. Parsons too. Just because of the versatility. Yeah. I kind of agree with you. Okay, and I don't then, mind. And it. then I'd go I don't mind it. So then one I'd go Mahomes, Justin two Micah Parsons. I still don't know if I go Justin. Then I'll go I him would, or Bosa. Then I'll, I would. I put Kelsey before Kelsey, Justin Kelsey, I was Jefferson. about to say that. I'd put Kelsey probably. All right, so Kelsey Who, three. No, I, I think Justin Jefferson is a better player than, than tra Travis Kelsey's no, better not. at his position. Travis Kelsey. Nah, Travis Kelsey is better. Like, uh, it's just tough. Travis Kelsey. I think Justin Jefferson is a better, it, more impactful of a football player than no, Travis no, Kelsey. No, no way. No, dude, stop. I don't agree with that. I don't think it's close. No way. Let me ask you. Who would well, you rather your quarterback throw balls to, Travis, Travis Kelsey, Kelsey or Justin Jefferson But right I can now? get, I can give me fucking Cooper Tra Cup and I'll Travis, be happy with that But that's well. not the question. But I, I don't need Justin Jefferson. the question. I want Travis Kelsey. You do? Do you I actually? Think, yes, Kelsey's the greatest tight end of all time, bro. That's... Travis Kelsey I'm not, I'm not might be, even that. if he's not, he might be the greatest of all but time. We're we talking tight end. Justin I'm not. I'm not talking positions though. I'm talking who is a better football player, Justin Jefferson or Travis Kelsey? Travis Kelsey. I don't think it's that close. Travis Kelsey. Travis no, Kelsey. it's it's Justin Jefferson. Travis Kelsey by far. Justin Jefferson is way more. He's a way better weapon. Jefferson's not even a clear cut number one at his position, bro. Thanks. That doesn't matter, though. Yes, it does. No, because the talent at tight end bro, is without, not even close to the Travis top tier talent as wide receiver. But it's not close because of how good Travis Kelsey is. Dude, Kelsey's Mahomes, why are we, why are we having Super Bowls for Mahomes, a fucking tight end? Without Mahomes, without, without oh Travis Kelsey, God. Patrick Mahomes would have zero Super Bowls. Well, Travis Kelsey has been instrumental. And if, and if Patrick Mahomes had Justin Jefferson, he would have won like five fucking straight. I disagree. He'd won, he'd won none, probably. I all right. Travis I, well, Kelsey. That's a, hard, that's a hard argument to make because they're both amazing. I'm not saying they're not. Justin Jefferson's not good. But like, I don't know why they're out by putting Travis Kelsey. Oh, well, but three you, over just because Travis Kelsey is so much better than every other tight end does not mean that he is still a better football player than yes, Justin Jefferson because there's so much top tier you wide receiver beauty, you talent know right about now. The beauty of this, I think the three of us are putting Travis Kelsey over Justin Jefferson. I agree, and therefore. He's very better. Therefore, you guys are fucking happening. morons. But. Let's put Jefferson four though. No, no, no. Hold up. I don't even know if I do that. I would go Chris, the most valuable position. I would go Chris Jones for. Really? I put Nick. Chris no, Jones. Why, wait, why, 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 over Nick taking, Bosa? Yeah, why Bosa, we take away yeah. from Nick Bosa? He's a hater because he beat out Michael. No, I like, I like Nick a lot. I, I think Nick's got to be in. Yeah. 
We're talking positional. So it goes Mahomes. Just, this is just strictly. I'm writing down. Mahomes, Michael Parsons, Michael Parsons Travis Parsons. Kelsey. No, no uh, I didn't mean positional. Uh, Nick then, Bosa. Then I, then I would go Nick Bosa. Sure. Nick Bosa is four. Yeah. Okay. Same, Five, same I'm position. going. I, I would go a quarterback here. Also. I would go. I mean, we're going to be split. You guys are all Josh Allen. Just go Josh Allen. Yeah. I'm, I'm Joe going, Burrow guy. I'm going, I'd still go Chris Jones over. Like, like, Chris Jones is a better football player right Who now. Who would you rather have on your team, man? Well, it's tough. What do you? A that's, a t- that's the worst question of all time. It's a, it's a no, it's asking you who's the I'd better football have Kirk, player. I would have, rather have Kirk Cousins than Chris Jones because the quarterback is going to impact my all right, team so, more. So, so Kirk Cousins five. <laughs> 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 I don't mind Chris. Chris Jones had a great year, but I want the flashier. Chris player. Jones has had I, multiple. I, I, I will I'd still rather have admit. Aaron Donald than Chris Jones. Though, like I, I know it's, we were only ranking like this top ten. Well, yeah, I would still take Aaron Donald. Yeah, agreed. Aaron Donald's not in the top ten though. I know no, that's no. why. I think we got to put a quarterback there though. I want to put a quarterback. And, go Josh. and I know you want to go Josh. I, I want to put go Josh, Josh out. Tom wants to go Josh. So Josh. put Josh. Fuckers. Okay, so Josh is five. <laughs> yeah. I love how you just wrote then I would Josh. Put, then I would put Burrow. Then it's either Jones or, or Tyreek Hill. They're both better Ooh. football players. They're both better football players. I'm then out. Joe Burrow? Yeah. <laughs> You're out? <laughs> He's hey, come done? Back. Jack, Watch come back. Me. Jack, come back. Come back. Come back. What do we got? <laughs> I, can't, I can't sit next to Lipe hating on Burrow the whole time. I'm not hating on Burrow. He's in the you top. always hate. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> Bro, we're just talking about great players right now. No, I also have to look at the list. because Chris Jones is the reason Joe Burrow. Burrow didn't make the fucking Super Bowl. Good cool. point. Thank you. Hey. It's a good point. Hey. Chris Tyreek's Jones not, should be Tyreek, number one. Tyreek Hill is not above. <laughs> I agree. He's not above Joe Burrow. Tyreek, oh. You're right. Tyreek Hill is above Patrick Mahomes. How, how is Tyreek not a Tyreek left the Chiefs, went to the Dolphins, and had to arguably the best receiver season last year. I think Adams beat him out. But no, Tyreek Hill had a great year. Tyreek did, but see, continue. my thing is, I can't win any of these arguments because you two know football way more Same. than me. So, like, I'm just, I'm going to try to get loud, fairness, is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to yell. Je- oh, we did put Jettis, did we? Yeah, we put, no, we didn't. No, we oh, put wait, Jefferson so, now. Jefferson's so we got to put Jefferson now, yeah. yeah. I'll put Jettis after Josh Allen. <laughs> I'll put Josh Allen after Jettis, but, you know. Uh, this is Adam. I and kind Felipe's of agree, list. honestly. I kind of agree with you. All right, I, 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 put, I lean that way. Too. I would I'd put, put Jeff, Jefferson I'd put Genesis above. Of Josh Allen. Allen. Thank you. Finally got. One. I think the tier is so. <laughs> it's, such, it's such a big drop off after Patrick Mahomes. Bro, <laughs> did anyone just see Jack's face? Yeah, I heard. Can him. we rewind that? Can Can we make Bro, sure in the edit? It's we frustrating that? trying to like get Are my word in. To be honest, because you guys just know so much more. I'll say something and it goes right Jack, through your fucking short. ears, man. Here's the thing, right? I think we all agree. There should be a lot of players between Patrick Mahomes and the next best quarterback. That's in my opinion. Because the mm-hmm. next best quarterback is so much worse than Patrick yeah. Mahomes. It's not close. Nah, Whoever it is. Hurts, bro. Oh, in that case. Yeah, sure. Jalen Hurts was three. How gross is that? Oh, my Jaylen God. Jalen Hurts, I'll tell you right now, Jalen Hurts, I can tell you confidently amongst the 10 of us. He's going to be 10. We'll be number 10. Yeah. <laughs> can you so read, put can him you at read, 10. Can you read what we have so we far? We got Mahomes, Michael Parsons, Travis Kelsey, Nick Bosa, Justin Jefferson, Josh Allen. Chris Jones. Chris Jones. No. It's Chris Jones, Tyreek Hill. No. Bro, I, I'm, I'm fine. Why, why are you guys so fucking low on Joe no, I'm Burrow, fi- I'm man? I'm fine like, putting Joe Burrow. Because Josh Allen and Joe Burrow are so interchangeable that how can that, you have more people I in will between them? I just consistently tell you why. Because Joe Burrow is good. But the same, he has not hit his stride in the sense that Josh Allen has. He hasn't had an MVP season like yet. Josh the only Allen reason jo- we haven't seen Josh jo- Allen had a MVP season last or oh, two years ago. Yeah, was considered. Ar- Where's the award? Where's his award? Yeah, did he uh, win it? Uh, his you just said he had an MVP season. I don't think he has one. <laughs> Dak Prescott was also on pace for an MVP season. Also, okay, but he didn't have an MVP players, season. Players Jalen can Hurts, have an MVP Jalen like Hurts. season and not win the MVP. Also, let's Carson Wentz. You're right. Uh, he, if he wouldn't have gotten I'm not hurt, saying he would have gotten it. Like, that's why I'm saying Josh Allen has had, an, has had amazing seasons. And the only reason people put him lower than Joe Burrow is A, the playoff success, and B, the turnovers. I've heard that. I don't give a fuck. Bro, 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 Josh I, Allen has turnovers are so important. We don't, why don't you guys ever bring that up with Josh Allen, though? We do. I have to bring it up more, actually. I don't, this, this I, is Josh Allen didn't have turnovers. He'd be number two on the again, list. Again, it's not but that I'm not acknowledging it. I'm just saying I'm not going to sit here and bump him down because of the fucking turnovers and INTs. No, I'm not going to bump Bro, him down. See, I'm not Burrow. smart enough no, with That's football what I'm to have gonna, this debate all the time. The favorite don't worry, don't worry. Brad, I'll finish Brad the list. brought it up. Faraz brought it up. Like, Matthew Stafford led the NFL in turnover in INTs, and they won the Super Bowl. So, I don't give a shit that much about it because he's putting up other lofty numbers. So, I'm going to put Josh Allen over Joe Burrow. That's it. Here's the thing. Bro, I've heard this, like, so many times at this point. It's playoff but performance. I'm, it's playoff. But I'm saying for this list... So many people across the fucking they don't know all, anything. Across we the know country, everything. We actually don't know shit. But uh, so many people across the That's, country I will agree. interchange Joe Burrow. Don't worry, and Josh guys. Allen, don't worry, you guys. Can't put people in between. But them. people yeah, do but that because, because they like the, the playoff success. Joe 
People do that because of the playoff success. It's not because of the image of Joe Burrow. He's it fucking is the image good. Of Joe Burrow. Now people like the he's, image of Joe Burrow. He's that hot, like white frat guy, bro. Like people like that shit. Let's be real. Let's, <laughs> hey, 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 he's hey. also fucking America, good. He America's is fucking white. Good. America's like Josh Allen is also white. white. And, bro, what, yes, why are we trying to make about race pretty, right now? Like, but he's not as pretty as bro, I know what Joe you mean. Burrow's great, but Josh Allen's greater. Won't agree, but. Uh, don't worry, guys. I finished okay, the list. It's the fine. List? I finished the list. Performance. I finished the list. I put Tyreek next, then I put Joe Burrow, then I put Chris Jones, and I put Jalen Hurts. Done. Thanks, guys. I'll I hope Hurts we all agree. Chris Jones, but yep. Yo, you hate Chris Jones. I just don't watch him ever, so I really have no fucking It's also just clue. not a sexy position. Chris Jones yeah. got Chris Jones the Chiefs to a Super Bowl. Chris Jones could have won defensive Bro, I, you, you act like I watch defensive tackles like every you're sure. at the you game. Sure. You're at the game where he took down where Joe Burrow and, ruined, and finished the game. I was at the game, but also you can't really see All shit. All right, so, Matan, what is our top ten That's list? Uh, I hope you're okay with me just finishing it. I made the decision <laughs> yeah, for us because we couldn't get through that. So, Patrick Mahomes, one. Micah Parsons, two. Travis Kelsey, three. Four, Nick Bosa, five. Justin Jefferson, six. Josh Allen, seven, Tyreek Hill, eight, Joe Burrow, That's nine, Chris Jones, and ten, Jalen Hurts. I don't mind if Joe Burrow had to be over Tyreek. I, I don't like that. this list. I don't mind it, but I, because I, <laughs> I do, the quarterback's the most impactful position. We really should have all done this separately because we have so many, so many uh, kind of more discrepancies. Fun, that was fun. I had a lot of fun. I didn't. I mean, if we're being real, like, like theoretically, you where's Joe Burrow? Daniel Jones? That's Come on. Fair. You could put Joe Burrow at seven. And just Tyreek at eight. And would you be happy then? Just take keep the list. <laughs> <laughs> just keep the list. I'm not fighting anymore, man. Yeah, this is a, it's a good list. It's, I'm a, we, it's I'm better a, than fucking. I'm a hugger, bro. It's I'm better than fucking uh, the NFL top 100, you know? Oh, you get the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> you get the fuck away. No, no, he no. Goes, I'm a hugger. You're going to burn me. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's all there. This fucking Thanks, guy guys. over here. Huh? Like, hey, Joe Burrow's been good, typing man. Away. Joe Burrow's great. Yeah. But Josh Allen's well, greater. Well, pushing it. But also, I don't think Josh Allen's <laughs> Jesus. great Jesus. Josh Allen's also not great. Bro, there's one great quarterback in the league. I, I, no, I, I, agree agree with that. I agree with that. It goes elite, then great. No, then elite, a bunch of goods. And Dak Prescott's no, just no. as good as Joe Burrow and Josh Allen. Thank okay. You. Next topic. Let's relax. Let's I don't, reel it, it in. Is, bro. It is. Uh, I don't I really have any more too. topics, honestly, but we do. I believe that. Coming up right after this, we do have. No, let's just keep arguing then. <laughs> Why no? We, we could wrap up because we got a guest we coming wrap on. Up. We got a good guest. We got on. a guest coming on in a few minutes. Uh, we got the one and only NFL insider Ari Mayrov coming Legend. back on the pod. Eight hundred thousand followers on Twitter. He's Don't number one Jew on this podcast. Yeah, Relax. better than we me. We gotta and keep you. bringing up Jewish people, man. Yeah, because we're. Shout out to Why do you gotta keep bringing up Texas, bro? What the yeah, fuck? What do you mean? Why do you keep bringing up Dak Prescott? State, Why do you keep bringing bro? up Joe being better than Texas? Because Texas is a fucking state yeah, in America, and they're your people. First of all, first of all, I don't ever bring that up. What? I never bring up the Joe that Joe Joe Burrow's better than Josh Allen. It always you comes drafted from you. Jesus Christ in one. I want to bring I back Moses. I drafted him twice. Twice. You're right. What are we talking about, bro? I, I just said anyway. shout out the Jeez. Jeez. Anyway, shout out Ari Mayrov. Uh, we're gonna have him on in a second, so stay tuned and listen to our interview with Ari Mayrov. All right, we got yet another very special guest returning to the podcast, NFL insider and friend of the Caps Off podcast, Ari Mayra. Welcome hey, back, one of the, Ari. One of the fellas. One of the fellas. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back. God, I mean, I was telling you guys this before we started. Last time I was on, not much was going on in the NFL. Now we have uh, news going on every day. So, like, football oh, season yeah. is here. It's awesome. Oh, fucking back. It's bro. here. I'm so it's excited. Here. Look at his smiles on everyone's Dude, faces. So I can't wait to watch backups play all weekend, man. It's going to be special. We, we had, uh, we had Trey, Trey Wingo on the pod uh, a couple weeks ago, and he said he was like, man, you guys have been scraping the bottom of the barrel oh, for yeah. content. We were drafting, like, a bunch of, like, stupid stuff, yeah, he, like, <laughs> favorite snack foods, like... The he was, he was telling us, he's like, he's like, what are you guys going to do? Draft like favorite types of butter next? <laughs> like, in fairness, the bottom of the barrel has worked great for us. Yeah, so we've, we've been it's thriving been a, and jiving. It's been a good uh, good off season for, for our content for sure. But definitely the content will thrive come NFL season. We actually talk which about is, what this pod is about. Which is just a month away. Yeah, so yeah. We, we gotta, we're we we going to get right into it. So obviously some some exciting things have happened in the last couple of weeks since we last talked Same to you. Are throwing dots, I know. Um, yeah. yep. So our first question is related to last time. I think we talked about running back contracts. Absolutely. There's one big name running back in particular who has not gotten paid and is no longer on a roster even, right? Is he, no, well, he's technically, is he he's technically on the he's roster? Technically he's, on the roster. On, he's on the pup. But he wants yeah. out. Yeah. He wants out. So Jonathan Taylor is not 
currently active for the the Colts. So, Ari, is there anything you could tell us about Jonathan Taylor? Where is Jonathan Taylor going to go? Is he going to go anywhere? Will he be playing in this 2023 NFL season? Why is it the Dolphins? (laughs) Stop. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, so he's still rehabbing his ankle injury that he suffered last year. And sometimes when players want new contracts, they pretend to have some injuries so they don't have to be on the field but the ankle stuff does sound to be like a real thing that he can't really be on the field but there are so many angles to this and we've talked about the running back situation for last time we were on and it's been a discussion for months now in the nfl saquon didn't get paid josh jacobs didn't get paid taylor wants to get paid after year three because he knows that the life the shelf life for running backs isn't that long and he realized that last year when he got injured after having a year where he was an MVP candidate going over 2,000 scrimmage yards. So he wants to get paid. And I've been surprised just how public this thing has become because when you think about it from a, you know, a, a football perspective as a, as a fan, you just drafted Anthony Richardson. He's on a rookie contract. Yeah. You want him to have as many weapons as possible. Nice. And Taylor is an exceptional weapon. So why yeah. not pay him? But I've been just surprised at how public this has become. And no one really has brought it up in the media, to be honest, and I think it's it should be mentioned, but the owner in Indianapolis, Jim Mersey, who has been um, very public and been the one really riding the ship over here and creating the whole drama, over the last year and a half, he's just really taken over a little bit of that organization. And as a GM, which is Chris Ballard in, in Indianapolis, you want an owner who isn't going to really meddle with what you do. And if you look at the last year and a half, he forced Carson Wentz to get traded. He benched Matt Ryan. He fired Frank Reich. He hired Jeff Jeff Saturday. Um, He wanted to keep Jeff Saturday for this year as well. And now he's controlling this JT stuff. And as a GM, Chris Ballard is very respected. And he's a very – tries to make sure there's no leaks in the building and no one really knows of their plans. And now you have an owner here who's kind of controlling everything and making it – a whole public feud, which of course is not what they want. So it's quieted down for now. And I'm sure that the front office would have preferred for this to stay quiet and not become a whole thing, but it has. And Taylor, I mentioned this last time, he switched agents to a guy named Malky Kala, who's an interesting guy, but he has some big time client clients. He has Shaquille Leonard. He has David and Joku, but he's more known for his MMA stuff. He's a big MMA agent and he has like Jorge Masvidal Jones. and he has John Jones mm. and the way he's handling this is it's as if he's like negotiating with Dana White so it's like yeah. it's an <laughs> MMA type of thing so it's like it's fun to follow in the media but the cults prefer this to be to be way more private and I think it's starting to become more private and we'll see where it goes from there you, but hey, I do think a drug. A, Jim Mercy I was saying Jim Mercy is off his rocker the last year what are they years, telling so. him in Alcoholics Anonymous <laughs> Hey, you relax. mentioned you mentioned JT's uh, injury. Like, how legit is that? I know he tweeted responding to it saying that he's not injured. The back, well, he's, he's talking about the ankle. Injury. He's talking oh, about his ankle from last oh, oh. last year. Is that year what he that was responding to? The he, back? No, no, no. He was Jonathan Taylor was responding to him being having a back injury, which is what Jim Irsay allegedly had said, which is uh, why they were going to uh, put I him on the, the, the NFL NFPI list or whatever. Um, it's the PUP. N- it's not the pup. It's NFI. the. I don't know. NFI? It's it's a not it's basically a non football injury. If you suffer an injury away from the team and the Colts said he had a back injury where he suffered away from the team, you would have the right not to pay him. So that was what was going on. But the ankle injury happened last year while he was playing. So that's why he's on the PUP list. It's, like it's Jason Pierre Paul but. was like an NFI. Yeah, that's an yeah, NFI. Well, that's a yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's NFI. Jason but Pierre how Paul. legit is the you know potential of Jonathan Taylor being traded? Like, what, is that an actual thing that could happen, or do we see him no matter what running it back with the Colts? No pun intended. Well, I, nice. I'm not going to rule it out, but the thing is, and we've seen this really like this offseason, for example, Austin Eckler was available for trade, and nobody wanted him. No one was going to give up a pick plus the contract for a running back a position that no one really wants to pay right now. So the difference here is that Taylor is 24 years old. He still has a lot of tread left in that tire, you would assume. So Mm -hmm. I would imagine that there would be teams who would be interested, but the Colts would also say, we probably want a second round pick or a first round pick, and no team is doing that. So the way the Colts are handling this is like, we value him in a trade, but we don't value him in a contract. So it's like, which one is it, right? So um, it's, it's a complicated thing. So... I, I would be shocked if they trade him. I think they're a way better team with him than without him. But nice. if the agent and the player are going to continue to make noise and make it super uncomfortable, does it get to a point where they're like, we don't have a choice here if we're not going to pay him? So that's the interesting part out of all of it. You know who the biggest winner is out of this whole Jim Ursay being off his rocker and just loud as shit? 
The Dallas Cowboys. Because finally, Jerry <laughs> Jones is not in the limelight. The Cowboys will win the Super Bowl. Confirmation 2023. All right. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah. And the last good, question on the Jonathan loophole. Taylor situation. I, I think you raised the Austin Eckler point. But I feel like Jonathan Taylor is a Spins guy that on. someone would give up a pick for, knowing what his contract and cap hit is this year. Also, knowing how young he is. Yeah. How... <laughs> how valid can forcing your way out get in the NFL? Obviously, you mentioned the agent, and I've seen on Twitter, the agent's been liking a lot of different tweets, especially when it comes to going to other teams. Like, can, they, can it get real in terms of Jonathan Taylor being able to force his way out? Well, I'm trying to remember the last player who really forced his way out, and the last one I could remember was Antonio Brown in Pittsburgh, mm. where he also went rogue and, you know, <laughs> was throwing footballs and kicking stuff and leaving. The, like, if you're going to go to that level... Maybe, then maybe yeah. it could happen, but the team could also find you and put you on a list where, you know, you didn't show up or whatever and make it, you know, the Colts have been showing their hand a little bit. I think it's Jim Irsay, not Chris Ballard, but they're willing to play hardball in all of this. So if you're going to play hard, we'll go right back at you. And if that's the case, the team has more leverage than the player mm -hmm. because he has a year left on the rookie contract, a very cheap contract, and then they could franchise tag him two more years after that. So the team has way more leverage. I just don't know if Taylor is going to be the type of guy who's going to do that. Up until now, everyone has said like in the locker room, he's been a team first guy. And then all of a sudden this year he showed up and it's just changed. And I think the reason it's changed is because he wants a contract. So he's making a little bit of a fuss. But um, if it gets to that point, if the Colts are willing to play hardball, they have more leverage than the player in this situation. Mm. What, yeah. what running backs do you think could be traded in the middle of the season? Do you think Jonathan Taylor might that might happen to him in the midseason, or do you think it'll happen before then? Or what other what other running well, backs do you think could be traded midseason? Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because last year was a year where we had so many running back trades. Off the top of my head, I remember Christian McCaffrey was traded. Obviously, mm -hmm. Jeff Wilson ended up in Miami. Yeah. James Robinson to the Jets was a big deal. Um, who else was there? There were a couple of more. Um, Z um, Naheem Hines to Buffalo, Zach Moss mm -hmm. to Indy. So there were yeah. a lot of running back trades um, last wow. year. It's going to be interesting to see which one happens this year. I think Taylor is interesting for sure. Like if the Colts start off um, start off the season not great and he's still making a fuss and Shane Steichen, the new head coach, wants to set a culture and this guy is ruining it, do we just trade him? I think that makes sense. Um, there are some other names out there who are interesting. Um, I, I don't think it's ever going to happen, but the Titans and Derrick Henry, mm. if they if they start off really bad, he has one year left on his contract, contract year. If you're sitting at two and four, do you just blow it up or not? I don't sense that that's the type of thing that Mike Vrabel would do, but that's an interesting one. And then there are some smaller running backs. I mean, the, the Falcons have so many running backs on that roster now with Bijan and Algier and Cordell Patterson. Yeah. Do you move on from maybe a Patterson at some point? Um, so th those are the type of players that I'll be looking at. But we mentioned this last time, this year's trade deadline, because there are two really good quarterbacks in next year's draft with um, – um, Caleb Williams and Drake May. If there are teams in the NFL who start off slow and are like one and five, one and six, do they just trade all their pieces just to get more draft picks like the Panthers did last year and then eventually try to get that quarterback in the draft where your fortunes could change for years to come? The Rams or the Bucks. I mean, what what teams like based on that do you think do you see having like a mid season fire sale? Like we talked yesterday actually about the Rams a little bit or the, the Bucks. Buccaneers. Yeah. Cardinals come to mind for it. Like what teams do you think are most likely to just sell every single player that they got basically to get draft capital this year? Yeah, I mean, I've wondered a lot about the Rams as of late because like it's such a funny team where you made the Super Bowl two years ago and now it's like literally like Stafford, Cup, Donald, McVeigh, and who the heck is the rest of this roster? Like <laughs> it's it's hilarious. There's like 30 rookies on that roster, a bunch of undrafted free agents. And I think their plan this year is really they're going to be they're going to try to be competitive. But I wouldn't be surprised if they realize midway through, like, you know what, let's move on from some pieces. And if they could, they have a first round pick next year for the first time in forever. Yeah. So, like, if <laughs> yeah. they could be that team, if they could be that team where we're picking one, two or three and we could get our future, future franchise quarterback, then it makes some sense to me. I mean, that would be Sean McVay really strongly considered leaving this year. So yeah. he came back knowing they're not winning this year. He's staying here for the long haul to try to build this up once again. And I don't really think Matthew Stafford has that many years left. I mean, the trade uh, stuff, yeah. 
they could say it's not true, but mm. they definitely at least looked into it because last year was a tough year for Stafford. He right. had a concussion. He yeah, had a spinal yeah. thing. He considered retirement himself, but if he mm. did, then he would have lost a lot of money. So there's um, an element there where he's not going to be here for three, four years. So you might need a new quarterback. So that team makes sense. Tampa Bay makes sense. Obviously, Arizona is, a, is an interesting team as well with two first round picks this year. And Kyler could be traded next year with that contract. So those are obviously some teams. I'm trying to think of a couple couple of other Tennessee is interesting they, they've yeah. kind of went back all in after signing DeAndre Hopkins but yeah, that roster weird. like they, no they, they they tore it down by cutting like Taylor Lewan and Robert Woods and Zach Cunningham and then all of a sudden they're like oh let's just bring some more guys back in with Hopkins or whatever that so that's an interesting team as well yeah they're like mm -hmm. in the middle right now so which way are they going to be by the trade deadline well you bring up the deadline and Jack was obviously mentioning it a big name that could be moved at the deadline is obviously Devontae Adams now Aaron Rodgers is a guy that took a $35 million pay cut. And the reason that he said I took a pay cut was because if someone comes available at the deadline, I'd like us to be able to go out and get them. How real is the Devonta Adams to New York Jets possibility? Yeah, I've seen some of that talk. It's very interesting. First of all, I'm still floored by Rodgers taking a $35 million hey, he's all in. actual pay cut. Yeah. Like, it's not a restructure. He's, like, actually giving money back. It's, That's like, awesome. it's like unheard That's of insane. what he did. What a legend. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but now, <laughs> but now there's, like, legit pressure for the Jets and their GM, Joe Douglas, and the nice. rest of the front office to actually bring guys in now. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like Green Bay where it's, like, oh, we were interested in Odell, but he went to the Rams. We were interested in this guy, but he went somewhere. Like, you guys have to actually bring Bay. people in now. Yeah. So, like, so um, I don't know which players it's going to be. Every year, there are players available to trade that line. Last year, uh, there were so many with McCaffrey and Hawkinson and Claypool and whatever. So, like, there are going to be guys available. I just have a hard time seeing the Raiders unload Adams. Like, maybe we've seen some of the stuff that Adams has posted on Instagram, and he did an article where he kind of mentioned he wasn't aligned with the front office. So maybe he creates a bit of a fuss, and maybe they start the year two and five, and he's like, get me out of here and the Jets step up and do it. But it's probably also worth mentioning the Jets don't have their second-round pick next year as of right now, and it probably becomes a first-round pick if Rodgers plays a specific amount of snaps. So you can't really trade your first or your second next year right now unless the Raiders are okay with taking whichever one it ends up being, which I don't know why they would do that. So I think you should probably keep that in mind as well. Dude, Rodgers just, like, went to the Jets and now, like, realizes he has, like, full control of everything. Yeah, yeah. So he could just win a Super Bowl. He's like, let me just tinker around with this team and just get as many players that I like as I can. He's playing he the wants to all the old Packers guys. It's like, so... Yeah, it's, but him, Devontae in New York. Yeah, yeah that'd be, that'd be insane. insane. Oh, my Cooper, God. Cooper Cup could be available to them. Oh, Cooper Cup. Oh I mean, God. I'm not saying anything, but that's yeah. more realistic, probably. Uh, if the right. Rams go like one in like five, like he said, yeah. yeah, and they're like, fuck this. That's more he's realistic. 30, he's 30 years old. Yeah. He'd go win a second Super Bowl in New York, man. That'd be crazy. Ari, right, obviously, training camp uh, is in full swing. It's done now. Is this the last week, or is there no, there's a couple more weeks? Uh, yeah, we, we have, we have got time. Know, we, just we got time. Is it just until the season. Preseason week one. Does it go until the the for like there's not a week between? Yeah. They don't get a week off? No, no it's breaks. summer camp with a lot of training. All right, well, obviously, training camp is in full swing. Training so camp. I'm curious, is there any news from training camp that uh, people don't know about that like you insiders are talking about with each other or like things that things that might be going on that might be exciting for fans to hear that we should know and start stupid narratives about <laughs> <laughs> well there's not a lot that actually could be said to be honest yeah. the one thing that i am super interested in and i think the public perception on it and the behind the scenes perception on it is so different is like the dalvin cook stuff where it's like he's a free agent and i think everyone is saying jets dolphins um he's such an interesting it's such an interesting situation because i feel like there are multiple teams in the AFC East who are all looking for running backs. And it's like that Spider-Man meme where everyone is like looking at each other, <laughs> like which one moves first, who's going to sign a running back first, right? Zeke with the Patriots, Cook with the Dolphins and Jets. The Bills have sniffed around as well. And it's like, who's going to do it first? And they're all trying to just wait to see what happens. Um, I just don't know what's going to happen with Cook because I kind of get this sense that the Jets feel, I'm not sure if this is true, but I, I feel like they think they're being used as leverage for the Dolphins. And they also feel like, when Cook came to visit them, there was a part of it where he came on a Sunday when it was an open practice, when the Hard Knocks cameras were on, and they all oh. walked in with their agency t-shirts on, and they're all like, we'll be on Hard Knocks now, and the fans are going to be chanting his name. There's a part of it where the, he might be that's trying weird. to build a fan base to put some pressure on the front office. You know what I mean? Ooh. And that's what I'm wondering about as well, because that's I don't think the Breeze Hall – like, Breeze Hall is – 
is progressing well from his injury. He should be ready for week one. And I don't think the Jets are looking at Dalvin Cook as a necessity, but more as a luxury for them. So they're not looking at this like we want to pay someone eight, nine million dollars to come in and just play with Brees Hall. We just want someone to be there as well, just in case of a worst case scenario or help us out in those week one, two and three where we're playing Buffalo, Dallas, New England, Kansas hmm. City to start the year. So that, that's that's Tough. part of it. I think that people don't realize that he's looking for a legitimate contract. And I'm just not sure exactly if it's actually like the Jets truly, truly want it. And if Dal- Dalvin truly, truly wants them and if he's just using them for leverage because he wants to end up in his hometown of Miami. Mm. I didn't even realize that, like, obviously it was during training camp, but that the hard knock the hard knocks, Oh, so yeah. when Dalvin went, it was all so close. So we're going to see Dalvin the, Cook in the hard knocks is what we're saying? I, I just want to say, I just want to say one more thing about it. So hard knocks is tonight. I don't know when this is dropping, but yeah, it's yeah. coming up tonight. The Jets have control over what goes in. I am super curious to know if the Dalvin Cook stuff ends up going in or not because the Jets have control over it. And if they felt like they're just being used to be on hard knocks, they could have just said, like, don't put that in. Do so have- that's something I am watching tonight. Oh, so I'm know, watching for that. Do you know if any other teams had that kind of control before? Like, or Because I feel knocks. like HBO usually has the say. No, every team has control over what goes okay. in. Every team has control over what goes in. Same thing with the quarterback series, by the way. The quarterbacks involved could tell them not to put it in. So they have uh, to run it by them before putting it in. Okay, okay. Well, let's go into, sure I'm like curious to go into that. Is there, do you have any ideas about which quarterbacks will be on quarterback? Obviously, I feel like it's come out that there's a ton, and you're smiling, as I said, so there's yeah, a he, chance that he knows. knows some shit. But <laughs> obviously, all these quarterbacks have said, oh, we turn it down, we turn it down. And then it came out that it was like all these quarterbacks are supposed to say they turned it down to build up this hype. So could we play a little hangman maybe to find out which quarterbacks are going to be on if you know? Maybe something. I mean, what do you know about uh, so quarterback? I'll be transparent. I don't know who's going to be on it, but I do think you're right that all these quarterbacks were told, do not say that you've committed to it just because we want it to be a element of surprise. And also, we don't want that to be a storyline throughout the season where the reporters yeah. are going to ask Facts. you, oh, you know, like what's going on over here? How was it this week? Um, is it difficult to have your the, the, the cameras in your house while all this is going on? So they want to keep that behind the scenes. So I don't know exactly what's going on and who was picked, but I do get a sense that all these quarterbacks were told to say nothing about it or just say, hey, we're not doing it. And then eventually in October, November, when the league announces it, um, we'll just all be surprised. Like, oh, wait, I thought he said he did, he's not doing it. Now he is. So it's Joe Burrow's is doing it. Let's be real. We, like we know we, Burrow's uh, doing it. I feel like we, we all talked about it earlier, like about who the three quarterbacks we would want to be on. What three quarterbacks would you want on quarterback season two? Good yeah, question. so I, I liked I, I liked the structure they did last year where mm-hmm. I don't know if they purposely did this, but it was superstar and then like above average and then backup slash starter type of role. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah. But um, I like that. um so yeah, so I, I liked that setup and I do like the Joe Burrow element, especially now with the injury. I, I would love to see the behind the scenes of all that going on. I like the Burrow part. I would love to have a rookie on, whether it's Stroud, Young, or Richardson. I think mm. one of those three so fun. seeing a rookie quarterback in his first mm. year and how all that goes through, that would be fun. And then the middle tier quarterback, I mean, I like Derek Carr in New Orleans. I mm. think that's an interesting cool, one. Yeah, new um a new team. Who else moved this off season? But um, Jimmy Garoppolo in Las Vegas is an interesting one. I would like to see those that. type of players. I would generally like to see that. Yeah. Why is that? Because he's a handsome face. You yeah, know, it's a is. good person to look at. <laughs> you know, him and Joe Burrow in the same season. <laughs> oh my oh, god, man. we're talking. <laughs> we're talking, good talking looks. Punks. Moxie. The roof. Punks. Yeah. Um, they put Jalen Hurts there too, and you're just whoo. Oh god. Let's just make Jalen Hurts would be fun. Let's actually. just pick the most yeah, handsome people. Jalen Hurts would be serious about. Jalen Hurts would be Call it handsome. <laughs> um, we touched on it earlier about we holdouts. Um, well, Jonathan Taylor's not really holding out, but Zach Martin's a guy that's holding out with the Cowboys. Are there some major holdouts that you're looking at where it's like it could get really bad, or are we just you know looking at the Zach Martin situation of a leverage play and uh, it'll get resolved? Yeah, so there are three holdouts right now, and, and it's rare for holdouts to happen ever since the new CBA happened because the fines are legit and they cannot be forgiven. So every day they're not showing up as 50K Gosh. out of their 50K. paycheck, and it's 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 going to eventually reach a million at this rate. So that's happening right now. It's Chris Jones, Nick Bosa, Zach Martin. I would expect Bosa to become the highest paid defensive player in NFL history. That deal is going to get done. But um, his agent is a very tough one, and he has told him not to show up. Like, he almost did of Joe Bo- Joey Bosa, his brother, but they got a deal done a day before training camp. Um, but I do think that that contract is very complex. It's very deep. It's going to be 30 plus million per year. But um, they're working on it, and the 49ers have been bu- 
budgeting for it for a number of years now. No way it's going to be really, really expensive. Chris Jones is interesting because the defensive tackle market has exploded this offseason, but there's like a big gap between one and two. Aaron Jones, Aaron Donald is at 30 plus million and Quinn Williams is at 24. And the other players who are paid like Dexter Lawrence, mm-hmm. Deron Payne are also right underneath that. And Chris mm-hmm. Jones is like, I don't want to be paid where number two is. I want to be close to the number one. And the Chiefs are like, nah, we think you might be closer to down there. So they're trying to figure that out right now. Um, but he's he's like a massive part of that defense. Like they need him to succeed on defense. So I would imagine that one also gets done. The Zach Martin one is by far the most interesting one to me. And I know it's an offensive lineman. It's not a fun position. But I frankly don't understand why the Cowboys are acting the way they are. Because he got an extension in 2018. And he has still been the best guard, arguably, in football ever since. And if you look at that division, that's Dexter Lawrence, that's Deron Payne, that's Jonathan Allen, that's mm. Fletcher Cox, that's Jordan Davis. Like, if you want to be where you're at this year, you need Zach Martin. And he's getting paid $13 million this year. The highest paid guard is at $20 million. So the market yeah. has exploded ever since. Yeah. And he has no guaranteed money next year either. So he deserves a pay raise or some guaranteed money to be added in there. And the Cowboys are acting like, nah. We're fine with it. And it just doesn't really make much sense to me. So that one is just super interesting because I don't think the Cowboys could get where they want to this year. And Felipe, you could talk more about this as the Cowboys fan, but I just don't think that they could get where they are this year with Zach Martin not being in that offensive yeah, line. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think it's it's kind of weird with how the Cowboys stance on this because they did, did just give Malik Hooker an extension. And that was kind of what a lot of Cowboy fans were looking at. Like, oh, okay, this is clearly a principal thing then. Like, if, we're not, if they're not going to pay... Uh, if you're paying Malik Hooker, you give him an extension, and he's a good player, and he's been playing well. There's no Zach Martin, but, but Zach Martin's Zach the best. Martin? Position. Yeah, and he obviously more crucial to your success, probably. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting situation. It's just weird, man. Um, all right, I want to ask you one more question, and then we're gonna yeah, we're, we're gonna wrap up. Sure. But obviously, yeah. the uh, NFL top 100 players came out this week, and the top 10 came out last oh, night. So we gross. spent uh, the first half of our podcast before Except you came on. Four. Uh, going through it, breaking it down, saying very where calm headed, saying where our qualms not, yeah. qualms were. Um, yeah, it was it got heated for sure. Um, and we we did our own re ranking of of the top ten. But I'm curious, what are your initial reactions to the NFL top 100 players list? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I always find the list to be funny, and I think the reason it gets so much attention is because apparently the players vote on it, and a lot of players just don't care; they just put their own teammates, and that's it. So the whole voting system is. <laughs> The whole system is kind of broken, but whatever it is, where it is, and the NFL does a good job of producing the whole thing, so it's nice. fun to watch. But yeah, um, yeah I don't know. I, I I just I don't know. I just didn't love it. If I'm being honest with you, like <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, the number one is right, and then after that, like I was on here last time. I, I'm high on Jalen Hurts. I say he's the third best quarterback in the NFL, I think, and um, they put him as the third best player in the league, yeah, um, which is interesting. Um, yeah, like I don't know if I'm putting him over Burrow, and then. Um, you know, I don't know. I, if you ask me if I'm starting a franchise right now, which one would I prefer, Justin Jefferson or a Nick Bosa? I don't know which one would you guys say, but I kind of would lean to Nick Bosa. Yeah. yeah. So um, whatever. There's um, whatever. There's a lot of different things. Josh Jacobs at number twelve. I love Josh Jacobs. That's I don't crazy. think he's the twelfth best player in football. Um, what else was on there? Trent Williams is the best offensive tackle in football, hands down. He should be like a top seven player in all of this. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Bingo. Like he's awesome. So whatever, there's a lot of different things here that I just don't get. But also, I just don't know how the whole voting system even works. I don't know how yeah. they ended up with these numbers. So um, yeah. it is what it is. It's a fun thing to watch. I think people take it way too seriously, if I'm being honest. But um, it it's um, it's fun. It's it's th- what matters is they, they got Very Patrick fun. Mahomes right. There was one year where they just – I don't remember what it was, but they I think it was Lamar Jackson was the best quarterback in the yep. league they put over Mahomes, and it just made no sense. So um, And I love Lamar. But it depends just, on the year. I guess. Yeah, I think it, after that year, I think you just – you can't take it that seriously. Like after we saw, yeah. I think Patrick Mahomes was four that year. It wasn't only that like Lamar was better than him. He was Patrick Mahomes was the fourth Mahomes best player. First year, right? Not after like his second so year. So Mahomes yeah. took it. Mahomes took it as motivation though. Like he yeah. he, he put like a, a, I think he, he tweeted like a notepad after that that came out. Then he wanted to see I was like, yep, that was cool. What a legend, man! <laughs> I love that they yeah. see this shit and they they react to it like that. Some as well. of these, this take is it to heart. Crazy. Yeah, no, we definitely also well, took it way too yeah. seriously. But we, you know, we're just like the casual fans. So what happens. So though. that's they they you said it. Like the NFL the, does an amazing job well, the, of producing. The fact the whole that Josh thing. Jacobs is ranked above Trent Williams the fact that and Tony Devonta Pollard, Adams, I'm like, what in the world? And that Tony Christian Pollard got McCaffrey. into the top fifty. Five is crazy. <laughs> Backup running back. Absurd. Absurd. Well, Ari, uh, that's all the time we got for today. We'll have to have you back on again when we have actual football being played. Um, it's be always better. a pleasure to see <laughs> you and have you on. So thanks again for, for coming on, man.
Yep. Thanks for having me on. Keep crushing it. And um, we're a month away, guys. A month away from football. So close. Started. Real football. So, so damn um, close. It's going to be awesome. It is. All right. Thanks, thanks Ari. Ari. Thanks, Ari. And You're thanks for listening to the Caps Off podcast. We'll see you next time. Peace. See you. All right, Matan, what was your favorite thing that Ari said? Um, that the Giants are the best team in the world. He didn't say that. In I all think, seriousness, the I Hot 100. He, he meant to, though, right? Okay. Yeah. NFL 100 list sucked. I called it the Hot 100. Yeah, the NFL Hot 100 sucked. It's anyway, subscribe. Billboard. Subscribe to the Caps Off podcast here below. Bell right here below. Bing, bing, bing. Click it, please. And also, check out my sports update on Twitter. Ari Mayrob, friend of the pod. Damn Danny right. Go. So definitely make sure to check him out. Also, when we get to 20K subscribers, do you know what Jack's going to do? To a tattoo? Yeah, he said he's going to get to a tattoo. He's going to actually get the full sleeve. So share with your friends, please. Bye.